Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Boxed Lunch here at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center. We are so very excited to have you folks with us as well out there in the interwebs joining us. And more importantly, we are so very excited to have the one and only Lauren Cross with us today. How are you doing today, Lauren? I'm doing fabulous. <laughs> Good, good, good. Well, we are uh, so, so very grateful for you taking the time to join us. And Lauren, before we get into too much detail, do you mind taking a, uh, just a moment and kind of introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is you do. Yes, so um, Lauren Cross, um, I'm an artist, curator, and scholar, educator. Um, I mean, I think those those labels pretty much describe <laughs> a lot of what I do. Um, and I, I, I really have tried to keep it open too, because there's just, there's so many different ways of interpreting all those different things. But I think, you know, the short and sweet is that I'm a creative and, you know, I really am all about bringing creativity into the world um, bringing um, the experiences of people of color, women artists of color in particular, into artistic conversations um, and just trying to create a world where everybody can enjoy and feel free to be creative. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Yeah, sounds great. And oh my gosh, what a life you've led. You have uh, <laughs> studied all over the place, multiple yeah. <laughs> And I also think it's important to point out that you are also a mother, which you uh, discussed with me a little bit as well. Two wonderful kids, is that right? Yes, yes. Nice. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. So it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lots it of is. Fun. It, it's hard enough to raise a child. Uh, it seems to uh, be a... Uh, uh, an additional badge of honor to say that you have done it during the pandemic, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, it's been it's been a journey for sure. I think I was mentioning to you earlier that um, my youngest is now one, um, but during the pandemic, he was six months. So, wow. to, for like six months of his life to be during the pandemic. Um, was just like, it was just a lot to process. They're like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, can, been... I can only imagine. Um, I, I've said a few times, my, uh, my kids are a little older and uh, <laughs> uh, doing the best that they can out in this muck. And uh, uh, I tell you what, uh, my, uh, my hat goes off to, uh, to all of the parents, uh, all the educators. And I know that they're, uh, we're starting to now see um, um, some kids that are actually being born in uh, during this uh, different uh, time of life. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, uh, they look back and reflect on uh, on all of these things. And uh, uh, my hat goes off to you. Uh, uh, looking at your bio and all of the great things you've done, I'm sure you will handle it with grace and ease. So <laughs> well, it is, it's wonderful to have support you have a loving husband um wonderful family a mother um siblings in-laws that are very supportive and um you know have just been really helpful in terms of like you know one it doesn't do all of that right. without having help so <laughs> so um, i feel very blessed and grateful that i have the support of my family so that that way I can continue to contribute um, because without that, that that would be a make or break situation. <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, what is on your lunch menu today, Miss Lauren? Well, I have one of my, uh, I, I don't know if I would say this is like a specialty, but like I think being from Houston, which is where I, I grew up, you know, and being from Texas, you know, good old Tex-Mex. Uh, this is a burrito bowl with a uh, fresh pico. Nice, it's nice. It's kind of been a 
it's been a new thing that I've been doing a lot because my my family were family that loves Pico and and instead of like buying, it was kind of at, during the pandemic I was noticing that I was buying right Pico. right I was like, wait a minute like <laughs> I have all this time. <laughs> <laughs> I need to just make this and so it actually has been pretty therapeutic to just you know because you're chopping up it's a lot of chopping yes, it's, uh, <laughs> cooking has become a great uh, uh, outlet for uh, uh, many things <laughs> yes. so yeah I have my uh, my burrito bowl and I have some hatch green chili Ooh. tortilla chips Very I'm all about nice. the ingredients like everything has to be have some Fit together <laughs> in that flavor palette. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I know people just uh, wait with bated breath to hear what I'm having for lunch after 54 <laughs> of these episodes. And uh, today I am having formal pasta with sauce. Now That's I know a lot of you are asking what is formal pasta? So I will just uh, uh, say in uh, uh, layman's terms, I ran out of spaghetti noodles. So I'm having bow tie pasta with uh, spaghetti sauce. So basically uh, spaghetti with uh, bow tie noodles, which in my mind is a uh, formal pasta. So, <laughs> so I'm more than more decorative <laughs> and visually <laughs> stimulating, I think, as a pasta. Absolutely. So I uh, got all that uh, set up before, boiled the noodles, uh, simmered the sauce with some ground beef, threw it all together and now I'm uh, in the process of warming that up on the stove as well. And obviously we'll share that as we uh, conclude today for my uh, uh, plating presentation. So, so Ms. Lauren, I'm, I'm curious if you would talk a little bit about, um, now you, you teach also, and you teach interdisciplinary art and design studies, is that correct? That's correct. Can you expand on that a little bit and, uh, and tell us all a little bit about what that actually entails and means? That's a really great, great question. Um, I think when, especially because when you put interdisciplinary in there, uh, I think in general, that's a question, that's a, that's a term that people tend to kind of be like, huh, what does that mean? <laughs> um, but ironically, I'm an interdisciplinary artist myself. And I'm in a, I identify as an interdisciplinary scholar. So the term interdisciplinary like really defines so much of what I do. And um, so in the program, it's, it really is about me um, educating students who really find themselves interested in like, you know, these different places within the art and design fields that aren't your typical, you know, maybe career choices that we would think about. So, you know, we may have students who are interested in, to, in being artists, but they're also interested in maybe working for a museum right. or maybe they're interested in design, but not necessarily like being the graphic designer, but maybe managing it, being the design manager or the art director. So it's really about those, those fields that are kind of like in the in-between areas and have different kind of functions within the whole um, ecosystem of the arts and design. Um, and so it's really a, a, a awesome program. We focus on creative entrepreneurship. We focus on cultural humility. We focus on digital communications, social responsibility. Those are all the kinds of skills that one needs <laughs> when you're going out to the workforce and in, in this field right so yeah. um these are those are, that's a little bit of what that what the program is about yeah we have three different tracks what yeah, are they so, <laughs> well we have three different tracks that are we have the open track which is <clears throat> sorry it's the track that is um the most flexible in terms of like student outcomes so like you know, students may desire to do art law or art therapy or, you know, or they may want a traditional career, but they just want a diff different path. It allows a lot of flexibility. And then we have a design management and an arts management track. And so, um, so it's really great to 
you know, just work with students who are really interested in the arts and they are, they're kind of on a road of discovery to kind of figure out what nook of the arts and design field they're actually interested in. Um, because these fields are so broad, right? So it's yes. not, you know, um, it isn't something as much as we would like to feel as though it's like this very like, you know, uh, linear kind of arena, it's actually much more broad, especially when we think about the creative economy yes. and how the arts really touches so many different fields. So it, it really explores all of that, that possibility. Yeah, and I, and I think it's really important too. So many people, um, I've heard express interest in the arts and then they say things like, you know, well, I can't paint or play a guitar or this or that. And there's so many other opportunities in the field itself that are as important as any art that is truly being created, if you will. And yeah. so it's, uh, it's very encouraging to know that there are opportunities out there for people who want to experience that a uh, uh, field of artistic uh, 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 opportunity, especially in a job setting, and uh, and that you don't have to be Picasso to be able to be successful in that. So, where do you yeah. teach this at? I teach this at the University of North Texas um, in the award-winning College of Visual Arts and Design, um, and it, it's <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> have to say that part. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, to your point. I think that that's that it touches on so much of what I think so many people should know about the arts. You know, now everybody may not be interested in like that as a field to pursue, sure. but I think that the arts and design has entry points where so many so many people actually could be participants or be engagers or at the very least enjoyers right. <laughs> of it. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times when I teach an art appreciation class that I hear students who say, oh, you know, I've never been to a museum before or I, I didn't realize that was something I could be into or that it was even for me. And so I think that, you know, creating those spaces where people can feel welcomed, you know, to feel like they can be a part at whatever level of interest they may have, I think is so, so important. Yeah, I, I could not agree with you more. I've, uh, I've said very often from a, a, a theatrical standpoint anyway, that uh, the more you are able to experience, the more job opportunities there are for you. And more importantly, you learn uh, why the lights are important for an actor and uh yeah. and why the sound is important and if you can't get in and experience some of those other uh disciplines of the process then it makes it really hard to uh, uh be able to use all the tools in your belt whenever you are trying to actually create and so it's nice mm -hmm. to know that there uh there are some things out there that are helping uh to guide these people to uh understand a broader picture of just uh uh, just the curation of the art itself. And uh, I think sometimes we get lost in that. We think it's a all or nothing deal. You know, I either have to be a, a great actor or a, a Brad Pitt or I'm not. And there's so much more to the art and more importance to the art as well, I think. So thank you for all of that you're doing for sure. So I've asked this next question of everyone and I know it sounds so redundant but I still believe it's very important to hear. And I know that things have changed a little bit over the course of the last uh, uh, year as well. And here we are in 2021, fighting a lot of the same battles that we have been. And I still continue to want to uh, understand how we've adjusted and what we're doing to move forward. So how is your organization and or your own personal discipline reacting to and been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic here in 2021 and for the past year? Yeah, um, goodness. I think that the biggest thing I would say is, you know, so much of art is experiential, right? And we're so used to experiencing it face to face. And so I think that one of the things that I uh, have, you know, has been a huge, huge, 
shift in the way that I've done things of, you know, since the pandemic started is that everything like everyone else has gone virtual. Um, now that can be a good or a bad thing, I guess. Uh, but for me, maybe it has meant that I've been able to have a, a broader reach or to kind of uh, touch in areas where maybe geographical location may have been an obstacle right. for a variety of reasons. Um, or maybe, it, maybe not, but I just, I think that that has been a huge aspect of where I see, like, there's a lot of more Zoom meetings where, um, like, uh, you know, curating uh, exhibitions and curating projects, um, but, you know, a lot of the work is all virtual, like doing studio visits with artists, all virtual. Um, those are things that are, you would typically do face to face. And so while I would love, and I love <laughs> seeing our face to face, I have appreciated though the opportunity to still engage and not to feel as though, oh, we can't be face to face. So like, let's shut everything down. We can't do anything. So, um, so that actually has been something that I feel has been a, a, a positive thing. And I actually teach, uh, well, speaking of teaching, teaching has gone online. So that's huge too. So like, it's kind of like everything that I do now is like all online. Uh, but I teach a course on understanding art museums. And um, actually during the pandemic, uh, I taught that course in that particular semester, we were looking at diversity, equity, access, and inclusion within museums. And, and so just as we're like having to go online was the section on accessibility. Mm. And so it was like, you can't get any more like accessible than to shift the whole museum's program online. Um, because in, in essence, for those who may not have it may not be easy for them to navigate the world and take the time to go to the museum for a variety of reasons, whether it's cost, whether it's physical disability. Um, you know, it's interesting how it actually opens up some opportunities as there's challenges with it as well. So it was just an interesting opportunity to kind of think about what we do in our field and think about it in different ways. Um, but like I said, I've, I've had the opportunity to curate a number of exhibitions, um, an exhibition in Fort Collins at the Center of Fine Art Photography. Um, and then I was the guest curator at Art Pace in San Antonio this fall. And then um, um, one of my mentors and one of my favorite artists, uh, Vicki Meek, she asked me a couple of years ago to guest curate her retrospective um, that was going to be in Houston and then opened in Houston last year. Um, and so we had the opportunity to bring it to Dallas. So it's that's it's currently at the African American Museum in Dallas now. And that's one of your most uh, recent curations. Is that correct? Yes. Do you mind talking that a, a little bit about that? It's called Vicki Meek, Three Decades of Social Commentary. Is that right? Yes. You yeah. Want to expand on that a little bit? It sounds very, very interesting and vital. <laughs> yeah. So, so Vicki is, uh, and for those who are like Dallas people probably know her or are familiar with her, um, prolific artist. In fact, in addition to the exhibition that's at the Af African American Museum, she just opened uh, a site-specific installation at the Nasher Sculpture Center as well. So while you're in Dallas and you go to the African American Museum, you definitely want to head over to the Nasher and see her site specific installation is really beautiful. And she is an artist who for, even though in the exhibition we say three decades, but she literally has been doing this for probably more like 40 years. Um, and just, you know, an artist that has contributed to the understanding of the black experience she is a artist who came of age as an artist, you know, 
inspired by the uh, Harlem Renaissance artists, mentored by Elizabeth Catlett, a um, lot of major um, artists when we think about African-American art history were like artists that she had access to, very rare um, to really had that opportunity to work with the artist like that. Uh, but she's here in Dallas. <laughs> and so, so I had the opportunity to really sit down with her and look at her 30 plus career and, and look at the span of her work um, and, and curate an exhibition about that story. And she's, her work is all about, um, really about narrating both the struggles of the Black experience because that's important, like she's, she doesn't shy away from that, but then also like hopeful things too. And so I think what's, what's so relevant, I think right now is in this particular moment. Um, I, I think even when the show, when it came up in Houston, I felt even then that I was like, oh my gosh, like this is so timely. Um, and so as we come into this, you know, new year, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so <laughs> So it's uh, it's been a really fun. Um, it's I, I really really enjoy working with her on on the exhibition. So we're hoping to have the show travel even more beyond this. So nice, nice. Now you were also the uh, uh, the founder of the, and I don't know if this is a word or a, a, an acronym, WOCA projects w-o-c-a projects will you yes, tell me it's, a, it's actually both it's it is? Both. okay well then i only so, kind of screwed it up <laughs> <laughs> now you've got it on both fronts so uh, <laughs> so uh woca stands for women of women of color arts projects um and so you know i usually just say woca for short um and it's really it started as it started as a space, but I think that the um, it 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 really was about an initiative. You know, I think that the the goal for me was not so much that it was only going to be a space, but that it was about an initiative to actually focus on exhibitions that would highlight women artists of color. And in a way, it's kind of an it's a nonprofit that I founded. It really helps me understand myself like, in my curatorial agenda, um, and and that's, that's that's essentially what I've been doing. You know, is um, from Vicky Meek, from um, the Right to Herself, and at the Center of Fine Art Photography, from all of the exhibitions I've done up to this point, it has been to diversify the contemporary art landscape. And so WOCA is the, is the vehicle in which I used to do that. Whether I say it WOCA is doing it or not, uh, it, it's, it's just the, that is me <laughs> um, in terms of that, that work that I'm doing. Awesome. So. And if people wanna uh, engage with that and, uh, and be a part of that, how can they find out about uh, uh, that particular organization? Uh, so wokeaprojects.com and then woke is also on all social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and um, and then also like some people just follow me on on Instagram and Twitter as well as Dr. Lauren Cross. Uh, is this all it's all it's all the same. So. Awesome. Well, I think those links are important. We'll circle back around to that and remind everybody, and we'll see if we can get some uh, some links in the comment sections as well. So, uh, great work, and uh, uh, we uh, uh, certainly uh, need a lot more of those particular things. So, uh, thank you for all of that. Now, I think we might have somewhat of a, a, a personal experience ourselves here, and so I'm very curious to hear about this. You also had a piece at the Edinburgh Arts Festival, is that correct? Yes, yes. So, that, oh, goodness, that feels like a ways away now. Yeah, but, ever. But yeah. we, we were at the Edinburgh uh, Festival, the uh, uh, play festival uh, oh. in 2019. I don't even remember. Okay, yeah. So, I think so the, 
the that work was I think in 2015. Right. Mm -hmm. And so did you actually get to go over there? Well, that was the plan. <laughs> Um, and I actually did go to the UK, but unfortunately, because of the strikes that were going on at the time, uh, um, we weren't able to actually make it to Edinburgh. Um, but obviously the work was there and other awesome artists that uh, were also in the show from the area, they showed me pictures and stuff. But yeah, it was that was a whole that was a whole journey. <laughs> yes, I, I can speak for the same exact experience. Yeah, we were at the French <laughs> Festival uh, a couple of years back, and uh, wow, what a, a, an amazing experience! So, uh, have you ever made it over there, or is it something that you uh, uh, would like to uh, uh, take an opportunity to maybe have some more art over there? Oh yeah, you mean in Edinburgh? Oh uh, yeah, especially during yeah. any of those festivals. It was absolutely mind yeah. blowing. Um, I would love to. Um, and that's always kind of been a, a goal of mine, um, especially the, the curator who curated that show. Um, you know, we've talked about that possibility, but yeah, I would love that. Yeah, what an experience. And uh, anytime I see some of those, uh, uh, little triggers that I'm somewhat familiar with. I'm always curious to know how the experience was and uh, and what they were uh, able to do over there. So yeah, I can't recommend it enough. Even if you don't have art in the show, wow, what a, yeah. an experience to get over there. And uh, you know, I uh, when they shut that festival down and all that stuff this last year, that that was really an eye opening uh, experience wow. to me for. Uh, uh, being able to really start to understand uh, uh, some of the severity of the situation that we were in globally. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, w just uh, what an amazing experience. And uh, and I hope, I really hope you get a chance to get over there and put your feet on the ground and walk around because uh, I, I cannot even begin to tell you the inspiration that uh, uh, comes from being in a, a situation with with that many yeah. artists at one time. It's so it's so interesting. My, uh, I have a first cousin of, of mine who performed at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival as well. And he said the same exact thing um, as I was getting ready to go. So hopefully that that opportunity will find will come back around again. And mm -hmm. that that would be a fun opportunity. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm no stranger to the UK, though, because well, that's where I went to school there as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, I, you know, I thought, just, about nice asking, over there. <laughs> I thought about asking that question about, and I believe it was like Cambridge and uh, 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 the American uh, International University in London, and then yeah. Texas. And then I thought, wow, I don't know if I want one of them to seem <laughs> higher or lower than the other. So, uh, so I didn't yes. want to throw that out there. But yes, you have studied all around. <laughs> I am curious yeah. to know if you have a uh, personal preference in terms of uh uh what you enjoyed the most and where oh man it's so, it's one of those things where i mean oh, this is this could be this could go a, a whole bunch of ways but i'll just say that uh the uk is where i grew up like does that make sense like kind of like came of age sure. in the sense of like becoming adult like figuring out what that actually means <laughs> um and so it'll always have a place in my heart because of that because like i was like a whole ocean away from everything that i ever knew right and had to you know for almost three years and wow. so had to just kind of figure life out <laughs> all while being a student and you know so it was it was a really uh magical time you know for that reason um with that being said i've definitely have uh you know fallen in love with texas again you know i i think i was probably one of those people when i was growing up that was like i can't get wait to, to get out of here kind of <laughs> you know uh just because I really just wanted to just experience the world. Um, but I think that I have, you know, I guess at this age in my life have learned to really appreciate it. 
you know, and appreciate the fact that all of my family is here, you know, and it, that actually is what matters to me most right now. So, so yeah, I don't know if I would like choose one over the other, but it definitely each place has a special, like, you know, it did something special in my, in my journey. Absolutely. We lived in Boston for a little bit too. So yep. um, it just, it just, you know, it's all about the whole story, right? It's not yes. one thing. It's the whole story for me. Yes. Chapters of a book. Uh, yes. I like that. I like that as a. That's the way I try to look at it anyway. Some I'd yeah. like to reread some, eh, you know, not so much. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, there were those chapters, but, <laughs> but uh, overall, you know, there's, there, there are good things I could say in every place that I've been. As life should be, you've got to find a positive no matter where you are. And, uh, and I really think that's something that uh, 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 smart people are able to do. They just find a way to make the best of their situation and, uh, and do what they can within that. So speaking of, um, how do you see the arts adapting now that uh, businesses and the arts are looking into 2021? We've had a whole year of this. What do we do now? Where are we going? Oh, I feel like there's a lot, there is certainly a lot of uncertainty, you know, because I think that there's really no way to know like how long this is going to be happening. You know, how like, I think there was a hope that it was just a temporary situation. And so I think as long as we were thinking about it as a, as a temporary scenario, then I think, you know, there was a way to kind of proceed and to say, oh, we're just going to be doing this for now. I think though, it would be wise for us to think about, well, what if it doesn't go back, you know, to normal so quickly and, and really just to use that as an opportunity for innovation and not to, I mean, sure, like I'm, I'm all, I'm all about grief, you know, like give yourself the space and the ability to grieve what we had or what we were used to. But I also think it's important to just kind of look at the situation and say, okay, what can, what can I make of this that can be a, can be a part of a long-term thing right. and not just a short-term band-aid situation. Yep. <laughs> um, and I feel like there have been some really good examples that I feel like, you know, there's like when I curated the artist in residency at ArtPace, they made a major investment in some technology that allowed them to have uh, a camera that could give like a, a 3D scan of an exhibition. And it literally was like, I mean, and I was just talking uh, with a director recently about how amazing like that kind of technology was. And, yeah. and it's, it's not that like that technology didn't exist before, it's, it, it's been around, but it, it wasn't as much of a necessity, you know? And so I think that there's a real opportunity for us all to think about, okay, maybe we need to start making certain kinds of investments in a long-term way that actually will increase our accessibility just in general. And I can hear like all of my accessibility scholars just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just, you know, thinking about, you know, the long-term and what that can mean in a positive way, you know? So I'm not saying that it's about doing away with what we knew, but, you know where we are where we are <laughs> yes. and so taking a taking an honest look at that and saying okay um instead of the kind of band-aid approach like okay this is actually might be an opportunity to do something that will set us up for the future right. you know post-pandemic so that's kind of like how I'm looking at it is like what do I need to be doing right now that is going to be a um, long-term it you know, I was, I've talked to other artists that, you know, I like to do things that are community 
oriented in my work, love to gather people. And this is not <laughs> the time for gathering, for gathering people in the traditional way. So it's, it forces me to like rethink that and say, okay, you know, what does community look like when you cannot gather? And then, you know, there's always been the question of, you know, what we say is community and the arts may not be community because everybody is not there. And so, so it's, it's, it's challenging me to kind of think more about those questions that, you know, we're able to kind of like still the show must go on <laughs> because we still have to have the show go on. But now I'm like, okay, no, let, let's think about like, what, what can we do to get everybody at the table? So, yeah, I, uh, uh, I always talk about semantics and perception. And uh, so many people have said, you know, we can't do this, we can't do that. And I've uh, uh, tried to get my mind around redefining those terms, gathering, uh, togetherness, uh, communication, and finding ways to uh, redefine them so that uh, they are possible because yeah. Zoom's been around a long time. I right? didn't even know about it <laughs> until. Right? March of 2020 and people are like, oh, you've never been on Zoom? I'm like, I don't even know. I, I watched Zoom when I was a kid in the 70s, but <laughs> I had no idea that that I could do all of this stuff with all of these people without ever having to leave my home. So, yeah. so we've just got to learn to lean into this and, and, and redefine some of these things that we claim are anchors to the arts because yeah. there's a way and we've seen a lot of really, really inventive people uh, continue to uh, uh, um, find out how to harness those kind of technologies that are with us and, uh, and do all they can to uh, uh, continue to keep the arts alive. And so I think we just gotta keep going. And uh, mm -hmm. again, you know, on that same kind of note, Lauren, what helpful community resources are you seeing or using personally Mm -hmm. And how can your organization or education be assisted or provide assistance to other artists and organizations? Yeah, I think that one of the greatest resources I have seen is, I mean, like a lot of the COVID relief uh, listings um, and just finding ways to connect artists to resources that are available. And also uh, I've, I've been a member of Fractured Atlas for a number of years um, as a fiscal, that's who my, I've had a fiscal sponsorship with Fra Fractured Atlas for years um, with WOCA. And that has actually been a resource that I have introduced to a lot of artists during this season. It's been a resource for me for my practice, just period. But I find that um, as artists are trying to think about new ways of like new funding models to support their work, you know, these kind of these kind of resources are so important to have multiple, multiple modes, you know, like one of the things, one of the courses that I teach is about art and business. And um, it's interesting to think about like, just this notion of portfolio of careers. Right. And what, the, the, what I've seen in other artists right now, like the artists that are really thriving are the artists that had multiple, multiple careers, you know, multiple modes of, of artistic careers. You know, so like there's the portfolio of gigs, you know, the right. gig economy. And then there's the portfolio of artistic careers or just like, or a, a combination of all of those things. And I have seen so much innovation in the artists that m managed to just kind of like, you know, have all of these different things going on. Or even if they were traditionally all of my A's are in the gig economy, you know, in one way, um, have pivoted, you know, to say, okay, that's one way that I did this. 
now I'm going to spin it in a whole new way. And they're thriving and, and in some ways doing better than yeah, I know. how they were doing before. <laughs> and so I think that there's an opportunity to re, to constantly be in conversation with oneself and to look at every season of your life as an opportunity to do new things and to be open to new things um, and never sort of think of things as being like, stagnant um and I know all artists don't aren't social butterflies <laughs> but I I can't tell you how many times you know just like those connections you know um not just for myself but other people you know that I talked to and you know you were talking about the check-ins you check in you say hey how are you doing you know you doing all right you know how you you know you know, you support certain artists that you know, because you know, you know, you just don't know like um, how they're doing. Yeah. Um, and they're doing, they're doing good, you know, because they, they figured out how to pivot. Like they didn't just say, well, this is the only thing I do. And so if I can't do that, I, I can't do anything. It's been the ones that have, they have been open, you know, to try new things, try new methods. Um, so in terms of resources, like there's like the tangible, like, you know, look for the resources that are available. Right. But then also there's like the practice of it all, you know, the practice of resource, like a personal practice of resource that I think is a mindset. It's not, That's it's really not cool. just, um, it's not something I can give you is something you have to take on yourself. Yes. And so. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, everyone needs a mirror because that's the tool <laughs> that will show you what you can change. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's uncomfortable for everybody. I don't think anybody is having fun right now. I get it. I, I totally do. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something where sure like we're all having to adjust we're all having to do things that we wouldn't want to do <laughs> in a normal case so i think that there's a there's an opportunity to kind of just examine oneself and say okay this is the moment <laughs> i'm gonna pivot <laughs> absolutely what am i gonna do with it you know i uh <laughs> it sounds so so cliche but i you know uh i ask people are you the brightest light you can be in this darkest time? And yeah. everyone has that ability. And so um, I get the frustration. I understand the voices. It's important. But yeah. at the end of the day, we are who we are. And we have the ability to each one of us individually move those mountains. Now, yeah. people debate all the time about the direction in which that's going. But wow, uh, it's all in each of us to uh, uh, move those mountains. And uh, I think that's some wise words and insight uh, to be able to say that at the end of the day, responsibility lies with yourself and what you're going to do with it. So um, I don't know. Those are my two words. So here's the most important question I'm going to ask you today, Lauren. How and where can we find you? and keep up with all of the great things that you've got going on? Well, there is, um, so laurenecross.com, E stands for Elise, which is my middle name. Thanks mom for that. <laughs> um, I found that there was a lot of Lauren Crosses out in the world. So it was like, ah, laurenecross.com. <laughs> um, and then, uh, on Twitter and on Instagram, I'm at Dr. Lauren Cross. Actually, yeah, Dr. Lauren Cross on Instagram and on Twitter. And then on Facebook, I think I'm just Lauren Cross, which is like a miracle. <laughs> like I said, there's like so many Lauren Crosses out in the world. <laughs> well, you appear to be one of the special ones, Dr. Cross, as I should have uh, noted earlier. <laughs> And we'll continue from here forward. So uh, 
I cannot thank you enough. We'll try to get all those links into the comments as well. Um, I'm just so appreciative again, some wonderful insight and uh, please, please, please keep doing the great work you're, you're uh, doing. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and show my uh, formal pasta now with the uh, Parmesan cheese and some crushed red pepper. I always tell people Tabasco helps everything. So uh, never be afraid That's of it. Throw it true off. one. Anything you want. So. <laughs> it's a true one. So Dr. Cross, I'll, uh, I'll let us go ahead and get on to our lunch. Do you have any other final thoughts or words of wisdom for the people out there watching today? I, well, I would just say that this is, uh, this is uh, as we know, it's an unprecedented time. Um, but what I've learned through this season and this time is how important it is to lean in to one another, to be kind to, to ourselves. Um, that's a huge thing. <laughs> so taking time to take care of oneself mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all of those things are, are so helpful, like to just, I think, get us to the other side of all of this. And, um, and, and just to just to be okay. I mean, I think this is something that maybe I'm accepting and, and kind of being okay with, hey, it's just hard work. Yes. Like this is hard, this isn't easy. And, and uh, not being hard on myself about that, you know, and to, and to find ways. I know a lot of my uh, educator friends use the term resilience or some people say grit or whatever, um, but just to find, find one's strength in that. And if you don't have it, you know, that's why I said lean into your support, <laughs> lean into your support, you know, and just making, they, making the most out of this, you know, it's, I've been surprised the moments where I've been like, now, wow, that was a special moment all in the pandemic, you know, um, and then it could have been just taking the time to like, you know, we were, everybody was doing chalkboard, chalk paint on, the, <laughs> you know, on the, on the, um, on the ground, chalk drawings on the ground and just enjoying moments like that with my daughter. And, and for me, like I wasn't able to make any art, but it was like, no, that, that actually was the best art I could have made. That's a great point. You know? There's going to be a lot of people asking for the time that we have had and, yes. uh, and the time that, that we still do and uh, you got to make the most of it. Wise words. Um, uh, there's nothing else to be said. Other than, uh, <laughs> that wraps it up for another edition of Box Lunch. Dr. Cross, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just uh, wishing you all the best to you and your family. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back again next Monday with another new episode of Can't Wait. And so with that being said, bon appetit, everybody. And we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.